but it is not unrelated to one of our projects. Posted a video here recently about struggles with the Big Bear. And I think I may have found myself a part to try and get us running. I may have overpaid for the part that I need, but now well, you can't see there, can you? It came with uh, some extra stuff. Yeah, got another one. We'll see if this one's a parts bike or if this one ends up being worth putting back together to run but at any rate I'm excited about this this is uh, should be a good step forward more on this one I can show you the rest of it well here we go I've officially doubled down I think I shared my frustration with not getting this thing to run correctly and I bought a CDI box off of Amazon. It was $84 or something. Installed it, and it didn't work. It wouldn't start. Make one spark every time I turn the ignition off and back on. That was it. So I called that a out-of-box failure, sent it back. Started looking around for something that looked to be a little bit better. They're about $250 by the time I get them here. And... I was able to get this guy for $300. Good parts bike, I thought to myself. I says to myself, self, this would be a good parts bike. Take the CDI off there, swap it into the other one, try it out. Good thought, right? Well, it would be. But Yamaha, in all of their infinite wisdom, apparently changed their CDI design because this does not even have the same number of wires coming out of it. Uh, my other CDI box, that connection right there, has three wires in it. And on this one, uh, they changed the gender of this plug. In addition, this one's got one little loose ground lug that hangs loose and was screwed to the frame. And this orange wire, which I think is the trigger for the coil. That one over there has three loose little wires. There's a red, a black, or a red, a brown, and an orange, I believe they are. And they're all three on these little bullet connectors. I uh, could just grain, ground this to the frame and go ahead and bolt it in if it weren't for the fact that Plugs aren't even the same gender. They don't physically connect. So at this point, I have to decide whether I want to ruin a potentially good CDI here and um, hack that plug off. Hack the plug off my harness over here to try it and see if it works, even though it doesn't have the same number of wires. Or if I want to try and get a different CDI for this thing. Ah, uh, doggone it. <laughs> uh, the best laid plans of mice and men. Am I right? So, I don't know. I've got a good uh, parts bike here now. But it appears there are some differences. Which is not exactly what the internet told me. CDI appears to be different. Um, what else? This guy's missing the throttle. I've got a feeling it sat for a long time with no carb on it, so the engine may be locked up. There's no pull start on this one. It's electric start only. So apparently they are not exactly the same. Most of the literature that you find out there on the interwebs will tell you that they made these bikes from about 1980 
1996 to about 1996, I believe, and that they really didn't change much through that production run. And I'm finding that not to be the case. Um, there's even differences in the frame. You can see this one's got like little floorboards on there. And there's a mount further back on the frame where those attach. No such critters on this guy. So apparently there are more differences than the internet would lead you to believe. Who'd have thunk it? So I don't know where to go with this, guys. I'm at a bit of a loss. I do have the battery charged up on this so I can show you guys what it does here. All of you Big Bear experts out there can give me some feedback. Um, basically, it just doesn't have any guts. Starts up, sits there, it'll idle fine, runs fine at low RPMs, but it will not wind out. No power on the top end whatsoever. So that's probably not a perfect indication of my issue. Um, you put it in gear and run around the yard and it does fine at idle or just a little above. But you go to get on it and it just it falls flat on its face. There is no power. I've got a 200cc three-wheeler up there in the barn that will run circles around this thing. Literally run circles around it. I've got a little hill here coming up to the house and it won't pull that hill in third gear. So it's not my imagination. It's not that I'm expecting more from this thing than what it is able to do. I've seen other 350 Big Bears. I know how they should be running, and this one's not running that way. So it's done this with two different carburetors. I uh, changed the fuel filter. Does it with or without the air filter in it? Does it with or without the choke on? Doesn't matter if it's cold. Doesn't matter if it's warm. Um, it really feels to me like a timing issue. I've checked the valve timing, uh, adjusted the valve lash. Everything seems to be right on target. Um, and it starts and idles fine. It just is a gutless pig. All right. I want to get this thing running. Um, I'm tired of fooling around with this. I've spent too much time on it. And the more I've thought about it, my understanding of this other bike is that this collar between the carb and the cylinder head cracked. There's usually this is covered in rubber and it's got a rubber isolator in the center. Um, the rubber cracked, started to leak, and that's why they sidelined this bike. So, the electronics on this thing are supposed to be in good usable condition. So what I'm thinking at this point is instead of dragging my feet, dragging this out, and goofing around and fooling around and wasting time, I think I'm just going to swap all the electronics from this machine over to that one. As of yesterday, this blue bike was running. I had it out. I was doing some work back in the back pasture. I rode it down there, rode it back. I hopped on it to go back there again later, and it started up and ran for just a few seconds and then quit. And I haven't been able to get it to restart. So I don't know what's going on with this thing. I don't know if it's a wiring issue. I don't know if it's electronics. I don't know if it's something to do with the pickup for the timing for the CDI or what the issue is. But I'm done fooling around. It's time to get serious. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tear it apart again. Take the front uh, fenders off so I can get to all the wiring. I'll probably have to pull the tank 
Um, probably do the same on this one. And I'm just going to swap everything over. Um, I don't know that there's anything there that shouldn't swap directly. I guess if there is, I will find out. Um, but I really think it's ignition timing. I really don't know what else it could be. Um, one thing of note, too, um, I was riding this thing yesterday, like I said, and uh, just going slow. I was in first gear, and just real gradually and slowly was able to ease into the throttle and to get it to make some RPMs. And uh, pulled it here into the garage, the lights were off, and as I hopped off, I noticed that the header pipe here, right outside the cylinder, was actually red hot. It was actually glowing red. And again, I wasn't flying, I wasn't running it hard, I wasn't, uh, probably wasn't above half throttle. So I really think that the timing on this thing is just way late. Um... And the reason that I say that is with all of that excess heat coming out into the exhaust, it just tells me that we're not burning the, the fuel in the chamber, in the combustion chamber, that that combustion is continuing even once the exhaust valve opens and uh, that that flame is following the cylinder all the way down. So really hoping that that's the case, that uh, there's nothing damaged internally to the engine and that it's just an ignition issue. Um, once again, I can't even get this thing to fire right now. So... I'm going to go ahead and swap electronics. Boy, I hope that points us in the right direction. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get to work here. Well, there's some more of that white stuff. This always seems to motivate me in some direction or another when I see this stuff falling. I love it. I wouldn't trade the four seasons that we have here in Northeast Ohio for really anything. I enjoy the beach, but I like the mountains, and I really, really enjoy all four seasons that we have here. I'm always ready for the change when it arrives, and um, there's just something about each one of our four seasons that I really enjoy. But at any rate, uh, it's always a reminder or a motivation to me to actually get something accomplished. And I really want to get this mess out of my garage and get, uh, get this bike running. So uh, just a quick recap. I took all of the electronics off of that bike, which I have learned is a 92, and put it onto this bike, which... I'm not sure because the VIN number is partially scraped off, um, but I think it's an 88 or 89. And the thought was I could just take the CDI from that bike, put it on here, fire it up, make everything run, see if that would uh, eliminate the issue that I was having with what I think is probably timing advance. And long story short, that's not going to work. Um, every stitch of wiring on this is different. Some of the connections are different. Polarity of the kill switch is different. So I ended up having to swap everything from that bike onto this one. And still, I can't make it run. I have no spark. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Including the stator. Uh, because the stators are not the same between these two years. So this is the stator off of the 92 and you can see it has a single Hall effect sensor here that is the pickup for the CDI that essentially serves as um, like a crankshaft position sensor so that um, CDI knows where the engine is and how to fire spark timing. So as I understand it and I'm putting this together kinda as I go um, <laughs> once again Making it up as I go. I'm learning here. Um, this stator assembly is different between these two years. This one is a single pickup. This one is off of that bike, which I think is an 88 or 89 again, is a dual pickup. It's got two different pickups, which is curious. So I think the issue with this one, even when I switch this over, I don't have spark. And... I'm pretty sure that I've got a bad, I think they call this the sending coil. So essentially the way a stator works is you're passing a magnet that's inside the flywheel 
over all of these coils. Every one of these coils just creates current to charge the battery, to run the lights, um, you know, that just supplies electrical current to the systems on the bike. This one, this larger coil, actually charges the capacitors in the CDI. CDI is capacitor discharge ignition. So it's charging a capacitor that's inside that CDI box. A capacitor is like a large battery that holds a lot of electricity and can discharge it very quickly. So this is charging the capacitors. And then when the CDI gets a signal that it likes where the position of the engine is from these Hall effect sensors, I think they call this the, uh, let's see, they call this a sending coil. They might have called this a trigger, a trigger coil. Um, when it likes the position of the engine, it goes ahead and discharges the energy stored in those capacitors through the CDI module to the ignition coil, which steps it up to about 10,000 volts and creates a spark at the spark plug. Now, as best I can tell, this coil is bad. And I'll show you how I've kind of determined that. I'll try to do this one-handed so you can see. I've got my trusty digital volt ohm meter. I'm going to set it to the ohm setting. All right, so OL is open line. That means there's nothing going on here. So if I take these two probes, I'll just check it here and make sure my meter's working. Touch them together. You see that the, the reading changes. So the way that you're measuring ohms, the lower that number, the better the connection is. It's hard to do this one-handed. So 0.5 ohms, that's pretty much a dead short. And what you do to test these sensors, uh, these Hall effect sensors, or these sending coils, is you're going to measure the resistance through them. So on this one, this is the one that we think is bad, I can test this Hall effect sensor and see if it's in range. And I'm going to say off the top of my head here that the range for these was like 90 to 130 ohms is what that thing should test out at in order to be good. So got a yellow and a blue there. Let's see, I've got yellow and blue here. So what I do is we connect our leads to the yellow and blue. And we take a reading. Yeah, I must be off on what that range was supposed to be because I remember testing this one and it was good. So I got 209, 208, 209 ohms through that Hall effect sensor, the position sensor. Okay? So remember that, 209. So on this one, with dual pickups, I can go ahead. Now, first of all, let's, let's back up a step. This coil, the sending coil, is on these two wires. It's this white with a green trace and this red wire. I've traced these wires all the way back there. And I should get a reading through that one as well. Uh, I forget exactly what the range is for that. Hang on here, let me check. Let me just get the right information. All right, so proper <laughs> proper terminology and readings. They call this a pickup coil, and they call this a source coil. And again, these readings may vary from year to year. I'm finding that there's not as much that's identical on these uh, different year bikes as what the interwebs would have you to believe. But the pickup coil should measure between 180 and 220 ohms, 180 to 220. So we got, what, 208 on that, so we're definitely right in range. The source coil, which, again, creates the energy for the spark, charges that capacitor in the CDI, should measure between 270 and 330 ohms. So, again, on this harness, uh, it's the white with a green trace, and the red. And if I go ahead and 
connect my leads to those two terminals. If I can do it one-handed. That's what I've got. 0.638 K ohms, so that's 638 ohms. That is outside of our spec. So I think the source coil on this stator is bad. I think it's bad. On to the other unit. On this one, I've got these two pickup coils. All right, I've got a white and a blue here. I've got a yellow and a green there. And if I look at the connections here, again, these connections are different. These two wires here that are individual, uh, it's a red and a brown, I think, come from the source coil on this stator. This plug, the four wires on this plug, all come from these pickup coils. So again, if I measure between the white and the blue, I'm trying to do this here one-handed again. It's white and blue, right? I've got 175. So we're close. We're right, we're right there. All of these things leave a little bit of, you know, I think most of these measurements they say are plus or minus 20% because they're just allowing for variations in temperature changes this for one thing. It's kind of chilly here today. Um, and also um, just variations from one meter to the next make a difference. So I'm going to consider that one's good. That's why I got a check mark on it. The other one, however, so this would be our yellow and our green wire. Look at that. Open line. I've got no connection. So that pickup has failed. Now, I told you that information for these bikes is hard to come by, but I did uh, some, some searching around, some digging, and I just Googled um, Yamaha uh, two dual pickup CDI or dual pickup stator, and I came across some information that's very interesting. So what I came across was a thread on the internet where they were talking specifically about a stator in a 82 Yamaha XT550. So different, different application, different motor, probably different design, but it's kind of the same era. And what they stated, by the way, if you ever come across one of those old XTs, get it. It's a great bike. I had an XT550. That was an awesome bike. Man, that thing was a torque monster. Didn't fly very well because it was heavy, but my goodness, was that thing a screamer. Um, that thing was a lot of fun. I'd love to find one again. But anyway, um, what I found is in this thread, they're talking about these dual pickup stators, and they stated, about the stators, stated, um, that it uses these dual pickups, one for base timing and one for advance. So it says it used, used one uh, pickup, I think, at 12 degrees for base timing and one at 36 degrees before top dead center for advanced timing. So it serves to reason that if this bike is staying on base timing, a bad pickup coil could be the culprit that it's not reading from that pickup coil when it goes to advanced timing, so it's staying with base timing. So there's a couple of things I can do. I can order parts to try and get this back together. I can order a pickup coil. I think these are, uh, what were they? Yeah, actually that's funny, look at this. See that? All I'm doing is moving this around, and the resistance is changing. So we've got broken wires down in here someplace. I 
think it's right there. There's something broken. There's something open inside of this. There's a broken connection. That resistance is changing as I move this thing around. So I could order parts for this. Um, these stator or these pickup coils are available. Um, I forget what the price was, $25 or $45 a piece. I could wait a few days to get it here. Uh, or you can buy an entire stator. Comes with your charging coils, comes with your um, source coil comes with your pickup coils. It's the whole assembly with the wiring harness and everything. I think it's uh, $240 plus shipping. Not really wanting to spend that kind of money on a guess and not really wanting to wait several days until it gets here. Knowing that this source coil is bad, but that this pickup coil is good, I think I'm gonna take this pickup coil out of the stator assembly for the 92. We'll swap it into the stator assembly for the 80, let's call it an 88. I'll swap the CDI and the wiring harness and the kill switch and the ignition switch and the relays and the rectifier and everything back off of this bike. This is all the 92 gear here now. I'll put the 88 gear back in it, which is right there. There's the relays and the rectifier. We'll put the stator cover back on here, put some oil in it, and we'll try to fire it up. We'll see what happens. Cows are mad. The snow's covered up their grass in the pasture, and they want some hay. So I probably need to go feed my cows. And then I'm going to swap that pickup coil into this. Go ahead and reassemble this. We'll put it together with some silicone. Let that cure for a little while. Put some oil in it. Cross our fingers and try it. Uh, one more thing I will show you here the source coil here, just to get a reading on that. Um, again, that should be somewhere between 270 and 330 ohms. So if I can do this with one hand. Ah, oh, lost it. Fail. Can you help me here? Would you hold that for a second? Just, just, just for a second. There we go. Ah, ah. Come on, help a brother out. There we go. Two hundred and seventy-three point five ohms. So I'm within range there. So that source coil, right there, is good. So, theoretically, if I swap the pickup coil into here and replace this one that has failed, the stator assembly should be usable. And I hope it will advance the timing through that CDI. So that's what we're going to try anyway. It'll save me 50 bucks. won't take me too terribly long. Um, I'll probably solder these wires together and then heat shrink them. And I may even hit them with some of my liquid electrical tape just for good measure. But that's what I'm gonna try anyhow. More on that once I've got that done. We'll put the stator cover back on and uh, we can try it out. All right, guys. Two sensors installed. 179 ohms on one. And 214 on the other, 213, 214. So did the best I could to get all of the wiring tucked back in there in such a way that it's not going to rub on anything. It's got this strip that kind of goes in here and um, holds everything down where it needs to be and then protects the connections here. So 
hopefully that'll keep things out of harm's way. Um, I soldered those connections and then I used some of my uh, scotch coat. Uh, this stuff is basically liquid electrical tape. Um, I kind of screwed this can up trying to get it open, but uh, you can see it's liquid. And then it goes on and dries and prevents um, conduction. So uh, that's good stuff. Uh, get yourselves get yourself a can of that. It's for use on splices that are subject to abnormal weathering or moisture conditions. Good stuff. So get you some. With that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some silicone on this thing. Bolt it back onto the bike here. Let that silicone set for a little while. I don't think I'm going to wait 24 hours because I kind of want to see if this works. But we'll go ahead and let it sit for a little while. And um, give it a shot. See what happens. All right, well, I don't have it put all the way back together yet, but I am very encouraged by what I'm seeing. battery that's in this thing is shot so I've got the idle adjusted up so it won't die um, I hate to pass judgment too soon but I think we may have got it I think before I go ahead and put everything back together I'm gonna try and carefully take it out for a quick ride just the way it is clearly I won't be able to sit down unless I I might be able to snap the seat on it. It's kind of a naked bike right now, so um, I think I'm going to take it out and try it, but I am confident, or hopeful at least, I'm hopeful that we may have this trouble solved. Guys, the verdict is in. I'm going to call this problem solved. That pickup was it. That was what did it. Now this thing runs like a 350 should run. It'll actually move and get out of its own way. Revs up and accelerates like it should. I just took it for a real quick rip. Just down the driveway and back. And um, I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to do a couple of things here before I put this thing all the way back together. I'm going to fix this heat shield, weld that up a little bit. We'll go ahead and put all the ties and securely fasten the uh, wiring harness back into place. Make sure that everything's plugged in securely. And I'll put the trickle charge on this battery and let it charge for a while. Then I think we can go ahead and put plastics back on this guy. but. Um, I'm tickled. I think we're in good shape here. It runs like it should now. And all it needed was that pickup coil on the stator. So, swapped a few parts over onto this from the parts bike. Um, I'm going to put the, the blank cover, the 92 had a blank cover on the stator instead of a pull start. I'll put that on here. That way I can leave the pull start off and order the parts. I'd like to have a pull start as a backup just in case I ever get stranded out someplace with a dead battery, especially since this battery is bad. Um, I may go ahead and buy a battery for this thing now, um, now that it's usable. I'm gonna go ahead and tie up the, the wiring here, get everything squared away and tied up and uh, put back together. But I think we've got a good running bike here now. We're gonna call this problem solved. All right, guys, I am tickled to death. I wouldn't say that this thing runs every bit as good as a brand new machine, but I bet it's 95%. Uh, there's a couple little carburation issues. Um, if you stab the throttle real quick, it coughs a little. Could just be that I've got that cheap Chinese carburetor on there. Um, Man, aside from that, 
this thing rips. It's not uh, it's not a 350 Warrior. It's not a 700 Raptor. But for what it is, it runs really, really well. Has no problem getting around. So I'm tickled to death. Um, it's a little irritating to me that it took this long to figure out what the issue was. But persistence paid off in this case. And uh, eventually we figured it out. So I'm going to call this... Uh, this installment in the project done. I don't know if I'll put the rear plastics back on here right away. I've got one broken bolt that I'm gonna have to put some heat on to uh, to get it off. It's under the seat there. Um, I wanna replace that battery and I still do need to replace that rubber boot, but I know where I can find a good one. So if I don't mind tearing two of these bikes apart, I can get the boot off there. I may look around a little and see um, how readily available that boot is, if it's something that I can get here. Um, without too much delay, I may just um, order a new one instead of taking that other bike apart. But uh, battery and a boot, and um, I might go ahead and change out that motor mount just to get that part of the, the plow mount off of there. Fix the pull start and uh, and I think we're going to be ready to go. So I am thrilled that uh, we got this thing running like it should. Runs pretty good now. So um, be more than sufficient to uh, drag the rounds, drag the kids around in the snow. So I might uh, might get to do that here yet this evening. Thanks for sticking with me through this. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.